Awesome. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for showing up and thank you for everybody in the future who we're also going to be including in this call because I know there's a lot of people who registered. How does it get better than this? This call is called, What is Fear? And How do I Move Beyond It? How many of you have been in those situations where you're like, oh my gosh, like the fear comes up and you just back away? Or you're like, not this again. Why does this always happen to me? And so you can't move through it. Um, maybe I should start over with my name. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Julie Tooten. I am an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator. I'm living currently in Northern California. Um, I've been using the tools and creating with them for the past 19 years, making, um, making my life a lot easier and sharing the tools so that your life can be easier too and so that you're not stuck with things. Um, and thank you for joining with or without your cameras. I really appreciate you being here live. So I, I have some information about fear that will help you to recognize what it is and what to do with it when it comes up. And it, it's actually pretty simple. Um, fear is most often a lie or it's a distractor implant. So what do I mean by that? Well, a distractor implant distracts you from whatever's underneath it. So if, um, if you're stuck in a distractor implant of any kind, whether it's guilt or blame or upset of any kind, it distracts you from actually what's going on underneath so that you don't access the potency that you have and that you be. And when it's a lie, it's basically um, realizing that either it's not yours or that you're actually excited instead of afraid. And literally every single situation is either a lie or a distractor implant. So look at this for yourself. Have you ever been in an emergency situation? Yes. And in an emergency situation, do you freak out and fall apart or do you get calm, cool and collected and handle it? And I was thinking last night when I was putting all the emails in so that everybody would get the replay. I was thinking about what does it look like to freak out and fall apart? Cause I've never done that. And I don't know if you guys have either. It seems like you haven't, um, but there was this TV series called Modern Family. And there's a character that's one of the gay fathers and he, they, they adopted a Chinese baby and he by accident left it in the, um, in the elevator in one episode <laughs> and somebody else in the family went into the elevator and saw the baby and took the baby and he goes back to the elevator and he's screaming like oh my god oh. <laughs> he's freaking out and falling apart that's not what we do we get calm cool and collected and handle it and our energy expands out um I'll tell you about a story when it, it was around holiday time and I was taking my kids to the mall to look at all the decorations and do some shopping. And my son, I think he was probably eight at the time. He just liked going off on his own. Sometimes because we lived in San Francisco and we had a corner store, sometimes we'd go to the corner store together and he'd turn a corner and decided he wants to go home and he would just walk home by himself. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> but anytime he wasn't around, I would just expand out and ask, you know, first of all, is he safe? Is he okay? Where is he? And I'd get an awareness and, you know, he was home. But this one time we were at the mall and 
there were a ton of people there. And I don't know what happened to him. He he got distracted by something and he just stayed and the rest of the people moved on and we couldn't find him. And I remember going out into the middle of the intersection of the walkways of the mall and just standing there and expanding out, expanding, expanding and asking which direction is he? Where is he? And I turned and I started walking and all of a sudden a, a security officer had him right in front of me and started walking towards me. So we know, we know when we can be calm, cool and collected and expanded and not get into the upset we just have to remember that it's our choice to get upset and be distracted or not. It's not something that happens to us. We actually choose it. And it's not wrong either way. We just have to recognize that it's our choice. So right now with all of this energy that's coming up, I'm gonna use the access consciousness clearing statement to clear the energy so that we have more space and more choice around it. If you haven't heard the Access Consciousness Clearing Statement, you can go to theclearingstatement.com and there's an explanation. And I also have videos on my YouTube channel in the Clearing Statement um, playlist. So everything this is bringing up about being lost or <laughs> being upset or not being able to handle something, will you... Will you destroy and uncreate all of that energy and all of those decisions and all of those judgments? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, povads, and beyonds. And just take a breath. Oh, so what that does is it it allows you to move beyond the place of automatic responder into space and choice. So something comes up and you're like, oh my God. And you're like, okay, hold on, wait a second. <laughs> I gotta get me some tools here so that I don't go into overwhelm or freak out. So this is what I'm going to share with you, five different tools you can use so that you can move beyond um, any kind of fear and also start to recognize that well this will be six tools then recognize when you have that awareness right in the beginning instead of saying I'm afraid or I'm feeling fear or whatever just go oh wow there's that energy of fear again and acknowledge it and the first one I have written down here is to ask who does this belong to? Is this even mine? Because right now with holidays and craziness going on in the world in all different directions, there's a lot of people doing a whole lot of fear about a whole lot of different things, whether they're afraid of getting COVID still and they're wearing masks and they're in their own car wearing a mask, <laughs> you know, or whether they're afraid of uh, running out of money or spending too much. There's all kinds of stuff going on and we can tap into it because we're aware. So how much of that energy of fear or uneasiness are you aware of that's not yours? That you sort of lay over the picture of your life and try to figure out where it belongs and how it fits in and how it is yours, rather than recognizing, oh, that's not even mine to begin with, return to sender. So everything that you have misidentified and misapplied as yours that is not, will you destroy and uncreate it and return it to sender? with consciousness attached. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, puppets, and beyonds. So that's all you have to do when it's not yours is return it to sender. And here's the thing, you can't change it or fix it if it's not yours. So if you're trying to change it or fix it and it's not changing, it might be because it's not yours. 
if you think about if your neighbor is having construction on their house and you're not, but you still hear it, you still feel the vibration, you still smell whatever, you know, sawdust or whatever is going on in the air, but it's not your house. So there's nothing for you to do to fix. You're just going to be aware of it. So what can you do? You can get bigger, you can go out, go shopping, go into nature, go somewhere else so that you're not disturbed by the noise. But most of all, just recognizing, oh, it's not mine. I don't have to do anything with it. That's a huge relief for a lot of people who have these awarenesses. They think it's theirs and they're like in automatic overdrive trying to handle when you don't need to do anything. Does that make sense so far? Cool. So the second tool is recognizing that it's a distractor implant and Hawk and pod, the distractor, hawk and pod, the fear, the energy, whatever it is, and ask what's underneath. Everything that is right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all nine shorts, boys, povads, and beyonds. That was interesting. A, a whole lot of energy came up. So does anybody have anything that, that they're either experiencing now or it comes up a lot as a distractor? that we can play with and you can unmute and talk if you like. I have- Mine's around money. Oh, oh go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> One says around money and Shelly? Traveling alone. Okay. Okay, cool. So we'll start with the money and then we'll go with the travel. Cool. So um, get the energy of the fear around money and feel it, where do you feel that in your body? I'm noticing it like in my neck and throat. Where do you guys notice it? Yeah, so first of all, is that yours? And when I ask that question, is it already changing? Yeah, so in that case, that's not yours, return to sender. Any of the rest of it that might be yours or that maybe you bought into and started creating yourself, um, everything that is and all the, uh, what is it called? The, um, God, I can't remember that thing. It's like the infinity sign my head is completely blank. So whatever that is, let's destroy and uncreate all of that. Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all nine shorts, boys, povads, and beyonds. And so what's underneath that energy? Yes, Mobius strips, thank you. <laughs> Mobius strips are those. It auto-corrected me to something else. <laughs> mobs tips but it, it got yeah <laughs> I got it though thank you um so so what's underneath that energy of the fear with money and since Chrissy you asked the question is is there anything left there or was it all not yours I think it's more not so much about money was it money um, buying an investment property, done it all before, but it fell through last time. So there's a lot of fear coming up that, you know. Okay, yeah. So all the past reference points that keep you projecting that into the future as a possibility, instead of asking questions to see how it's gonna be different, if it's gonna be different, what it's gonna create to actually have your awareness around it. Let's destroy and uncreate all of those projections and expectations, right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys, pull ads and beyonds. And the thing is when, when we're making choices and that energy comes up, you wanna clear the energy because you start to go into reasons and justifications from the past rather 
than clearing the energy and actually seeing what's there and seeing if it actually would be a good investment or not. We can have our awareness when we don't have those projections and expectations in place. Is that also one way of looking at what a distractor implant is? Yeah, because absolutely. That was sort of that underneath thing, because I was looking at the money and then there was something else under there and then, then I realised that it wasn't actually money. It was, yeah, it was so yeah. much more. So and, cool. And then it's you a keep, cool process. Yeah, so you can keep clearing and clearing and what's underneath and what's underneath and what's underneath. And it's amazing what you get to when you get under all of it. And it's nothing of what you think. We can continue to go, but I want to make sure that we get to the other little space, um, <clears throat> the other tools. And if anybody wants to do some um, some work on this, I'm happy to do a mini private session because it's very quick. <laughs> It's amazing how quick and easy these tools make moving through tough situations. So anytime it's a distractor implant, you pock and pod and ask what's underneath. And so now we're gonna do the fear of flying because this is kind of cool. No, 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 I don't have a fear of flying. <laughs> flying alone, traveling alone, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I have no fear of flying. I do yeah. recognize a lot of it is not mine because it's like when I tell somebody and they're like, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. So yes, I planned it's the like trip. like speaking in public. <laughs> yeah, I planned the trip and by myself. It was light and expansive. Told my sister, who I had to tell my sister because she has the flight benefits. So I couldn't, otherwise I wouldn't have told her at all. And, and then I started second guessing myself. So what I'm doing now is I keep, I'm stopping the thinking, analyzing, figuring it out. But I'm also not playing with the energy of the trip either. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, what happens is we get we receive the projections of other people's points of view. Mm -hmm. And we either barrier against it, in which case we're fighting it and resisting it, and we all of a sudden are aligning and agreeing with it all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Or uh, or we're not having the space and the awareness of what our point of view is. Yeah, I feel like I'm cutting off, like I'm, what did you say? I'm resisting her over here, Yeah, <laughs> which is then cutting off my awareness over here. Yeah, exactly. And so the, well, we're gonna skip around a little bit. The fifth tool, sorry. Uh, not the fifth tool, the third tool. Oh, so we are going in order. Third tool is expand. Because fear makes you contract and stay small. But when you expand, you begin to have the space of you and you begin to have your clarity of awareness. And, and fear is actually the same energy and the same chemical makeup as excitement. So what if you're excited, somebody else is projecting at you, like they feel that energy and they're like, oh my God, you must be so afraid of that. <laughs> and and She's like, like sending me tra traveling alone, travel tips. And I'm just like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> that is so interesting. Yeah. So what is your point of view? And that's, that's another one. It's my just, point of view and this is like, I'm not sure I'm going to say it, but I don't know sure if, sure if it, my energy is matching it, if that makes sense. My point of view is I can travel alone and just be aware and pay attention. Totally. And trust that lightness that I felt at the beginning and trust that if something changes, I'll perceive that. Absolutely. And that's what occurs. It's like I knew the moment my son wandered off. I knew it. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, where'd he go? And I could have freaked out, but what's that going to create? You know, not a good idea. 
in the middle of Christmas shoppers. <laughs> so yeah, expanding out and if anybody doesn't know how to expand out, I do an expanding exercise every single week on Monday mornings in my expand, uh, Finding Your Sparkle group on Facebook. And many of them are also turned into YouTube videos. So you can just check the one that pulls your attention and listen to it. And it just helps you expand your being. The more you expand, the smaller all of the stuff that you're aware of becomes because you're so big. It's like you're this ginormous being and all those energies and all those situations and all those things are diminished in the presence of you becoming greater. So how far would you have to expand to have your awareness? is a great question to ask. And notice when that energy of fear coming up, how contracted we tend to get and instead choose to expand. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Is that just an awareness to have that expansion all the time? Because I do the expansion uh, exercises every day. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shelley. And um, I find that during the day, though, I must go just very unconscious because then I, I feel myself by the end of the day, I'm very tight to all my body's telling me a story, but I'm not really tapping into that, I suppose. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is definitely a muscle to build to stay expanded and the thing is as you use these tools and you um you become more aware it's like you can't shut out the things that you used to shut out before with unawareness mm -hmm. so you're going to be aware of a lot of things you're going to be aware of your neighbor's house and all their construction and you're also going to be aware of all the people who live in it and all of their points of view. <laughs> so it starts to become a lot. However, when you're expanded, you're not at the effect of it. You don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to buy it as yours. So I guess you could ask yourself, um, you know, what, what is actually making you tired? Is it you that's tired or are you aware of other people and other bodies that are tired? Are you pulling energy through your body from the earth to give it that enlivening, um, continual chaos energy? So these mm -hmm. are some questions that you can ask to see what feels like for you yeah. and how to change it. More questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It's interesting. Like when, when we start to expand our awareness and step into our magic and our potency, you, you can't just filter out all the stuff you don't want to deal with and only have the good stuff that you've decided that you, you would like to receive, you're going to receive everything. And it's not a problem unless we make it a problem. And it like, that's where tool number four, interesting point of view comes in. Whatever it is that you are aware of, what if it was just an interesting point of view and that you don't have to do anything with it? So when you're on an airplane and there's a baby crying way in the back of the airplane, it's not your baby. You don't need to do anything with it, but you're going to hear it. So sometimes it's helpful to clear entities 
And if you know how to do that, awesome. It usually works with babies on airplanes. It's usually not about their ears. It's usually about other things <laughs> that they're aware of. Uh, and most of their parents are not. So um, only do that if it, if it benefits you by having the baby be quiet. <laughs> but it's like, this is life. We're going to be, we're, we're not alone on this planet. There's tons and tons of other people in bodies and beings without bodies and, you know, plants and animals and all of this stuff has consciousness and we will be aware of all of it. So what would it be like to lower the walls and barriers, allow the energy to move through you? And what if you didn't have to fix everything and handle everything that you're aware of, you can just allow it to be there. And for people to choose what they choose, and you don't have to change them. Um, okay, so there's a couple of things, fear of death of your loved ones. And that is something that is interesting to my, my stepmother, uh, just, we just lost my dad last year, this time of year, and she had never lived alone. She was married to him for like, 40, 45 years. And she was really afraid. But the thing is, that kind of fear is projecting into the future that you don't know what you're going to do when the future comes. And it's already been a whole year and she's fine. It's like you have to deal with what's here in the present, not creating problems in your future. So when, when you're looking at future stuff, um, I would say to get very present with where you are right now and what's going on right now and have gratitude for who you're with and all the people in your life and enjoy every moment that you can. And sure, you're going to have upsets, but do the best you can to enjoy them <laughs> and yourself. <laughs> and so that other stuff is just, it's just creating or manufacturing problems in the future. So you can pock and pod that if you're aware enough. She doesn't know anything about access. She's not interested in that and that's fine. Um, all, all I could do is just be present and be more space and not have any point of view about what she chooses. And, and it's, you know, it seems to be okay and tell her that she's strong and it, it works. So hopefully that helps. Um, story of your son at the mall brought up a fear of liberation from worries. Uh, liber fear of liberation from worries. Is that true? Or are you excited? So I don't know if it's a language thing, but look at that. Liberation from worries. Why would you be afraid of that? And in an emergency situation, you get calm, cool, and collected and handle it, then you have no fear. So any fear that you're putting into your future, you're manufacturing it. It's not real. Because when you get faced with something, you'll handle it. Until then, you don't have to make up problems unless that makes your life more fun. And that's another thing we have to recognize. We're actually, <laughs> we do this stuff because we enjoy the trauma, drama, and the upset until we don't. So everything that brings up, let's destroy and uncreate it. Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all nine shorts, boys, povads, and beyonds. Um, and Denise had a question. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a question around, say you're working on an agreement with someone and fear starts to come in that maybe they're being deceptive or lying and you expand or I expand and I, I feel like that's not true, but then I doubt it. And I think, am I just 
being up like is that my truth or am I just like wearing in that moment do do I just want it to be that way and that way I'm not dealing with the reality or is that really true and how do I distinguish yeah well part of it is learning to build your your awareness by trusting what you know and going with it and not doubting because doubt is another distractor implant so you can pock and pod the distractor implant of doubt and ask what's underneath it but the thing is if you're having a meeting and all of a sudden that comes to you, you're not the kind of person that would think about that and make that up. So it is an awareness. So you have to just go with it and not go with it in conclusion, but go with it in question. Oh, this is interesting information. I wonder how this is gonna work out. And notice how it creates this relaxation in your world when you're like, oh, yeah. When we get really heady and back and forth and back and forth, it's because we're not trusting. It's pretty simple, um, but everybody else in the world and the way this reality normally works is very complex so that you don't have your awareness. But when you just relax, expand out, and be present, it's amazing how much information you will get and you will know. I mean, just before this call, I was thinking to myself, oh, my candles are ready. I should probably text the lady and, and find out when I can go pick them up. And literally two minutes later, she texted me and said, your candles are ready and you can come pick them up until this time or tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that happens all the time, all the time. And we have to acknowledge every time we know, even if we choose against it, acknowledge that you know, and it builds the muscle. And then a follow-up to that is, maybe there's a potential for that, but there it's like undecided on their part. And by expanding, does that help steer the ship in a better direction potentially does that help influence what they're creating on their side uh no <laughs> it just gives you more awareness you know okay. what like it it really depends what they're going to choose but from that space you'll be able to ask questions okay if i if i continue to go into discussions with this with these people What's that gonna create in five years? How is this gonna work out? And you know, have you ever gone to bed with somebody who you knew wasn't gonna be a good choice? <laughs> and you were correct in the end. <laughs> and it's okay. It's just, you know, we learn to listen to those little whispers. When they're whispers, we think that maybe it's not true, but when they're whispers, they, they are your awareness until you listen to it and strengthen it and strengthen it, and then it gets louder. Most of the lies and the confusion of normal life um, is loud. And so your awareness is gonna be this soft whisper underneath. Okay. Thanks. How about empaths who feel everything? Okay, great question. So for that, besides the expanding and asking, is this mine for everything? Because you know it's not yours. Um, you can use the crazy phrase, which is everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. And nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. And say that 5, 10, 20, 50 times until it breaks that cycle of whatever. It's like a dog chasing its tail with whatever you're aware of. Everything's the opposite of what it appears to be and nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. Everything's the opposite of what it appears to be and nothing's the opposite of what it appears to be. Because fear is excitement or potency in disguise. 
So if you're an empath and you feel fear all the time, it's either not yours, it's excitement or potency, what's underneath it. It's just you use all the tools, whichever tool you can come up with. Expand out. Don't buy it as something greater than you. When you're expanded, you can be greater than it. And you have to choose to expand. <clears throat> One time I was riding a horse and something happened and scared the horse and it started freaking out. And I went like really big and it stopped, like stopped without me even pulling on the reins. So we can energetically create this, whoa, stop energy by expanding. It's really simple, but it's a choice and it's building a muscle. And by expanding, you, you just think big? You just... Um, it, I, I would suggest reviewing. Have you taken the foundation class at all? No. no. Okay. Have you done the bars class? No. Oh, oh cool. A newbie. <laughs> <laughs> well, so go to, go to watch some of my videos on expanding. Um, but it's basically getting present with your body and recognizing that you are not just a body, you are a body with a being, you are the being. And the being is what expands out infinitely, because you're an infinite being. And so therefore, your body is inside of you, not the other way around. And how often, you know, if you grown up and done spiritual things you think your soul is like this little tiny pea inside of your body but it's the opposite you are this infinite being and the more you can explore expanding the space of your being the easier all the awareness is on your body because it creates this big buffer around your body you're more like you know the milky way you know, in the sky, like stars and space and sparkles. Mm. And, and you have this wonderful body that allows you to play <laughs> together. But they are two different things. Mm. Yeah. So cool. Does anybody else have <clears throat> any other questions about fear and how to move beyond it? I would highly, highly recommend asking some questions around things like this now. So anything that comes up that you're like, oh my gosh, ask, is this fear or excitement? Julie? Yes. This is Kate. I, I, I couldn't find the link right away because it was under fear. I was looking for Julie. So I was like, I didn't get it, <laughs> you know, so I'm sending you messages. So sorry about oh, that. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was like, she didn't send it to me. She sent me another thing. So I was like, I don't know. That was my fear. My fear I wouldn't get on and I was 30 <laughs> minutes late as a result. <laughs> How do I create my own bull? But um welcome to my world so everything wait nothing is what it appears to be and everything is what it appears to be everything is the opposite everything of what it is, appears to be <laughs> everything is the opposite of what it appears to be and nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be oh, okay and nothing yeah. Gotcha. And when you say that, like even when you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't fall asleep because you're thinking about stuff, you can say that crazy phrase and it gets you out of your head. It unlocks that algorithm of thinking. Cool. So my fear slash 
excitement, potency is a lot of people asking for things with a sense of urgency now. And then I know that's not my energy, but it, it appears in the money world, since I've been working a lot with money, there is a, um, an interesting way I'm creating money. So that is creating more fear. So a lot of the, the things I've expanded and felt into. Well, is, and, it, is it creating fear or is it creating excitement? Uh, terror. <laughs> Because the money is, it's feeling like I got to make this decision in three weeks and I, or less. And I'm like, this doesn't, no one does that type of creating, right? You, it should feel light and expansive. Yeah. If somebody's pressuring you into something, it's not necessarily, you know, you got to take space for you. And so one thing you can do if you have that much time, it's a long time to make a choice. You can take a whole day and indulge one choice, like either yes or no, whatever it is, and just indulge. Okay, that's what I'm choosing. And then the next day, choose the other choice and indulge that and see what happens. Because when you choose, the energy starts to change and create. So if you're looking at investing in something or doing a class or going somewhere, if you're like, okay, I'm doing it. And you start making plans, you start putting energy into that. You'll start to get an awareness of either more lightness and more excitement, or it'll start to feel heavy and contracted. In which case, if it feels heavy and contracted, choose the other to something else that feels light. And if they're both heavy and contracted, you need to just. What else is possible? <laughs> uh, that's exactly right. Cause they're all showing up with a similar. Yeah. Vibration, obviously. Yeah. And it's all so, like, I want partnership, but just going to meet like a date. So I was listening to your beauty in the bake, bake off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, break breaking up. off beauty in the break off break <laughs> break up. I love it. <laughs> you blew my mind already. Beauty in the baking. No, it's beauty in the breakup. And I've been listening to a lot of that. And I got your audio book. Thank you for the audio book because I'm not going to read something that I love your voice. And that book is awesome. And I and I've also creating a breakup with potentially a business contract I've had for 20 years that it's all I've ever yeah. known. And that I have been trying to step out of that. So that's like unwinding a lot. So yeah. also in that a lot of good things have been coming or there's no good or bad, but things I've desired. So it, it's okay, but expanding. So energy, if you, if you keep getting opportunities showing up that have the same energy exactly you can you can look at that and hawk and pod everything that you have chosen that creates that and ask for something different yeah because i'm not sure if it's me inside me or um i have the entity awareness stuff and i've done a lot of work around that you know i'd love to dive deeper into your classes. I, I need to create more resources to get deeper into that. Cause I feel there's a big um, awareness and gift I have in that. And I do receive from that and it's equally some other garbage in there that I need mm -hmm. to know how so to work better a with. That's uh, the question. My question, I think you're, you answered it for now. Okay. My feet, you just said to try those different choices, expanding yeah. and that, yep, yep. And then I want a clarification on that uh, and statement. I would highly recommend anytime you hear yourself saying my fear or I'm afraid to stop and pock and pod. Pock and pod everywhere. I've decided this is mine. Pock and pod that this is fear because it's, it's just habitual and it's not real. 
Okay. I'm just going to pot and pop that. And the way it keeps going to a sense of, I don't know, how do I question around this? I, I, I believe it might be a distractor, but I'm not sure. It's, um, I feel like a failure, which is a lie because my money isn't like, I should be in a bet. It's all this. I feel like at 47, it's all this bullshit that maybe is just self-imposed, but at the same time, pot and pot that. Yep. And how many other people on the planet are currently going through that? And how many people do I coach and am I with that I'm aware of that are already in my mm. field? That I'm like, how aware are we? Yay. Amazing. So pot and pop, pot and pop <laughs> that. So it's just the awareness. Okay. Thank yep. you. And what is my energy? How, like, how am I with money? What is my reality with money? Okay. And everything that doesn't allow that to show up and be the dominant energy in my life, destroy and uncreate it. Thank you. You're yep. welcome. Thank you. So thank you all for joining. Um, I, I really hope this helps you move beyond any time that you feel like you have fear, any time you feel like that you're being stopped Nobody can stop us, only ourselves. And it's fine, no matter where you are or what you're choosing. What if you could just relax and be grateful for where you are right now? Pushing and judging is not going to help. So relax, be grateful. And then after that, you might feel like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to reach. I'm going to stretch. I'm going to jump. I'm going to choose something greater. And choose the things that feel light. Choose the things that feel exciting that you might have thought were fear, but it's actually excitement. Um, when, I, when I started choosing the entity stuff, for example, um, it, it was really pinging in my world to become a talk to the entities facilitator. And it's a huge investment on my part and everything was shut down because it was 2020 and it was COVID. Um, and I decided that I didn't have enough money to be able to do it. And everything in my world started to crunch and cave in. And I was like, oh shit, what decision did I make? And I realized it was that. So I pock and potted it and said, no matter what, I'm choosing it. And Things just worked out. You know how it is. When you choose, you create magic to, to allow everything to be created. You choose it and it comes to you. So choose the things that feel light. Choose the things that are exciting. And what if you didn't have to stop you? So I hope to see you again sometime. I do have a talk to the entity specialty intro coming up in a week. If you can make it, I'd love to have you. If not, enjoy whatever you're choosing. And I look forward to meeting you in person one day. Take care. Thank you, Julie. That was wonderful. Thank you. Bye.